The first two coloroscopes I made worked, but not very well, and to be honest, they don't look very good. So I decided to take a second try and make something that looks and works better. First up, I found this plastic embroidery hoop. It was about seven inches in diameter, and better still, it was almost three quarters of an inch thick, thicker than most embroidery hoops of this size. It cost $14 from Hobby Lobby. I cut out two plexiglass discs, slightly larger than the outside diameter of the ring. As before, I used silicone aquarium sealant to glue the two discs to the ring. Instead of the tiny holes used in the first coloroscopes, this one uses a quarter inch hole drilled in the side and filled with a rubber stopper and then the stopper cut short so it's not too obvious. I only placed glue on the outside edge. It seemed to work well and it prevented glue from oozing into the inside of the coloroscope. Finally, I filled it with rayoscopic fluid. Let's see how it looks. The undulations are easier to see and they last a lot longer. Altogether, this one cost about $20 to make and it works so well I really think it was worth it. This is the underside of the coloroscope after it's been sitting for a while. The silvery shine you see is mica that has fallen to the bottom and is stuck to the bottom of the coloroscope. Some of this mica can get stuck so hard, even vigorous shaking can't break it loose. So it's best to select one window to be the upper window and make sure it's always facing upward when you put it on the shelf. Placing a coloroscope on a Lazy Susan turntable and spinning it rapidly can produce some incredible patterns. If you leave the coloroscope alone for half an hour so that the mica settles to the bottom and then spin it and stop it, you create a pattern that to me looks like the eye of a hurricane slowly closing in on itself. For a smaller, cheaper coloroscope, I found this one quart jar in Hobby Lobby and it came with a metal lid. The lid had a plastic threaded liner, which I removed and discarded which left me with a smooth metal container almost an inch thick and about four inches in diameter. As before, I glued a plexiglass disc to the open side, filled it with railscopic fluid, popped in a cork, and I was ready to go. This time I decided to use green dye. It looks pretty good, but I think the blue shows more detail. This smaller coloroscope works great, but I think the larger diameter shows more detail and is more entertaining. Placing it on something hot produces some interesting thermal currents. Here I'm using a stack of large washers heated to 190 degrees. Here it is again with the same stack of washers, except this time I've heated them to 250 degrees. Let's see how it looks after some vertical shaking. And that's it. Making coloroscopes is easy, inexpensive, and fun. So if you're thinking about making one, I hope you found this video helpful. For hundreds of similar projects, please visit my main website at waynesthisandthat.com. And as always, thanks for watching.